This video is sponsored by Fitten. Bit of a confession here, I feel like a beginner sometimes, especially when I have to pick up a new JavaScript library or framework or a new Python library I gotta integrate and I've never used it before. But even after you learn all that, if you have to work with other APIs, they're all implemented differently, so you have to learn each one. Yeah, that's gonna make you feel like a beginner every time and there's more and more stuff to learn all the time. And this is why coding assistants are winning. And there's a bunch of coding assistants out there. They all work slightly differently. A huge one that you might have heard of is Copilot, GitHub Copilot. Of course, that one costs money. You have to pay for that one. But I want to show you a new one that has a few benefits. First of all, it's super fast and it's free. And to demonstrate whether this will work well or not, I'm going to get out of my office for a bit and go to bad Wi-Fi. The goal for today is to separate myself from the comfort of my office and take my work outside. This is my office, away from my office, Starbucks. And I want to write a fully functional YouTube analytics app that uses the YouTube API to pull data from it. I've never done this before. I'm a total noob. Let's see how it goes. If you've ever had the pleasure of looking at Google's docs for their APIs, you'll know what I'm talking about. It's a pain. So my goal here is to use Fitten, the fast new free coding assistant, to do it for me. So I can install a VS Code extension here. Fitten, here it is. Install, super fast auto completion, less than 250 milliseconds. Right on their website, they're comparing it to Copilot, which takes about a second, whereas here the latency is less than 300 milliseconds and the accuracy is higher. And I wanna see how far the assistant will take me without me having to look at the docs or to actually do anything. I didn't wanna write any code, I just wanted to copy and paste until I have something usable. And then at the end, I'll get into refining if I need to. Only if I need to. The key here is doing it fast. So I'm limiting myself to just an hour to see how far I can get. So I started from scratch and I asked Fitten to give me all the steps needed to set up a new project and install dependencies using a Conda Python environment. When I gave it my problem statement, it wrote the code, but because I have a spidey sense about these kinds of things, or let's just call it nearly 25 years of software development experience, I immediately started intervening with my preferred way of doing things. Bad manager, bad manager. I told it to keep functions modular and not have one monolithic script, but I didn't give it any concrete instructions. Instead, I kept things purposefully general, like uh, split the script into multiple single purpose modules and call them from the program bootstrap. And it actually did a really good job. I spent nearly the whole hour and not once did I have to take over and correct any of the code myself or add anything. It was always copy pasta from the chat window and I got a working program. Until that is, um, I asked for a specific piece of YouTube video analytics that was not part of the YouTube data API. Now I gotta go to a different Starbucks. I ran into a little bit of an issue, which is completely my fault. I used the um, data API. I mean, I forced Fitten to use the data API because it initially wanted to use the analytics API. Would have been the right way to go, but I insisted and I get to override what the AI recommends sometimes to my detriment. So now I have to rewrite it. Well, I'll have Fitten rewrite it. But the nice thing is uh, it won't be mad at me and I won't say I told you so. A feature that I just discovered incidentally is if you're doing web development, the chat window can preview your HTML, which is kind of handy and unique. I've asked myself to do another hour and uh, I agreed. Up until now, I've only been using the chat window to interact with Fitten. My goal was to do as little work as possible, so I had to prompt, copy, and paste. And that worked, that got me to where I needed to be. But as any good coding assistant, Fitten of course has editor features like code completion, which they claim to be superior in speed. There are people in the developer community that have stopped using Copilot because the perceived uh, code completion is slower than they can actually type it out. Sometimes it's just faster to type it than to have the assistant do it for you. Not for me though, um, I'm not that fast at typing. So for me, I'm gonna need to do a slightly different test. I've set up a camera pointing at two computers over here that are set up exactly with the same project. One has Fitten on it, one has Copilot on it. And this camera will shoot at 960 frames per second to try and capture which one will be faster. This test turned out to be ridiculously more difficult than I thought it was gonna be because of the non-deterministic nature of triggering these completions. Every time you get something a little bit different and every time I do it, I have to change the query so that they're not cached anywhere. But here's the closest I got. Mm. 
Even though working with it in real time does feel speedy, the difference I captured on the camera is not that different. So I decided to record this just the way it is as I was typing code. I gave both Fitten and Copilot the same function name to see how long it responded. And here I analyzed the footage. This is Copilot. This is where I pressed enter right here. And at this point, it's now going back and generating the response for me. And it comes back with a response. So that's almost two full seconds. Started at seven minutes, one second and five frames. There's there's 30 frames per second and we're about three frames shy of two seconds. That is a long time to be waiting for a response. When you're typing code quickly, you have a certain expectation that the responses from the AI will be quick. Now let's take a look at what Fitten does. Here we got Fitten on the laptop on the left. I press enter and two frames, it already has something there for me. There's 30 frames per second. This takes two frames. So around what, 60 milliseconds or so. Okay, now slow Alex relatively speaking, is thinking about that and seeing it, but seeing it quickly and deciding in my brain what I want to do next. At this point, my brain is the slow one here. So I'm like, okay, I like that. I press enter here to accept it and boom, there's the next response right there. This one takes a little bit longer from one frame to frame 16, 15 frames. Need my calculator for that. 480 milliseconds. Then I do it again. I process it with my brain and then I press enter again. And this is another AI generated response here from Fitten. This one is about 19 frames. And again, I think about it, I press enter, and we get a multi-line response with the rest of the code to complete that function. That last one takes just over one second. So with Fitten, it feels more like you're in the middle of the action instead of pressing something and waiting for two seconds for a response. The bigger difference came about in the quality of the results that I got. The Fitten response gives me the actual query to execute, and it's already reusing one of my functions. YouTube search, list, part ID, max results. <laughs> yeah, this is actually correct. Well, it looks correct. And Copilot hasn't given me any actual code. It just gave me another comment, which I kind of find annoying at times. Let's see if the next line will do. Okay. Oh, it did it, but not great. Um, so this will probably work, but it's hard coding the URL. It's asking me to hard code my API key in here when the API key is already available and it's already logged in. So Copilot is not picking up the context here and the rest looks fine. We wanna be able to reuse functions, right? Functions that already exist. Here, Fitten was aware of the context, reused the functions that are already available in the context and didn't ask me for my API key in the middle of the code, hard coded. All right, so besides the speed and the accuracy, how else is Fitten different? Well, I noticed that the context menus are simple and easy to access. This is something they don't really point out on the website, but this is a nice little touch that I find to be a quality of life improvement for a developer because all you need to do is just right click once and that's it. You're not digging through nested context menus. This makes it clean and easy to follow. And there's one final bit that is really cool. If you're learning something brand new and the model wasn't even trained on it, Fitten is able to go out to the web and search documentation. All you do is just paste in the URL of where you want it to go and it'll dig through the docs or whatever you pointed it to, assuming that you're pointing it to documentation of a new framework or library or whatever. And I tried this with React 19, which is in beta, it's not even out yet, but the docs are available and I gave it to Fitten and it was able to search the documentation and give me responses in real time. Okay, okay, there's one more thing. The chat window is actually multimodal. You can input text or you can up upload images. I haven't found a need for that yet myself, but maybe there will be one. After all, I do use other tools to do OCR and things like that. This is just kind of a one-stop shop that does it all, I guess. Now, if you're thinking that, oh, this is going to be a totally private thing that's my own and running on my own machine. No, of course not. This is running on somebody else's servers. So your information will be leaving your computer. Keep that in mind. If you have privacy concerns, especially if you work at a company that doesn't allow your code to leave the premises or leave your computer and go somewhere else. So you might want to double check that. But if you're an individual developer, this is free. You can go try it out. You can use it in VS Code, JetBrains, Visual Studio, and Vim. And it supports 80 of the most popular languages. I'll leave a link in the description if you want to go check it out. Otherwise, it's been fun. I'll see you all in the next video.